Welcome everybody, Mr. Thrasher here. It is time. The long-awaited Halloween 1978 filming locations. We're going to go around South Pasadena, the real-life Haddonfield, and the greater Los Angeles area in search of all the locations for the 1978 classic. Directed by John Carpenter, starring Jamie Lee Curtis, Donald Pleasance, presented by Mustafa Akkad. Oh... Close to 45 years in the making. See people going by to see the Strode house all day. Maybe not all night, but definitely all day. Just across the street from the Strode house, you'll find this memorial bench placed here in loving memory of Mustafa Akkad, known to the world as the godfather of the Halloween series. Your legacy lives on, filmed here in South Pasadena. 78, also Halloween 2, and his legacy continues. Here we are nearly 45 years later on the brink of Halloween ends. Rest in peace, Mustafa Akkad. Legend. Jada the Myers house as Michael approaches on Halloween 1963. As the camera approaches the Myers house for the first time, Michael watching his sister from this window just over here. Judith is in there with her boyfriend. It's not open today. They went upstairs. Michael made sure. Saw the light go off up there and then he knew for sure something was going down he did not agree with. So he went around the back of the house this way. Gated off, you can't get to the back, but this is the house. Went into the back, into that door, and immediately to the right in the kitchen, grabbed a very large butcher knife, making his way back through this area of the house, and up these stairs, you'll see inside, best shot of the inside you're gonna get. Oh, you can't, because it's stained glass, but went up the stairs right there up there to murder his sister. She was only 17 years old, he was only six. On Halloween, 1963. And the Myers house now stands just over there, very close to each other. Pretty damn cool. Michael, at just six years old, standing on the sidewalk outside the original Myers house location. Right after murdering Judith is the opening shot when it says Haddonfield, October 31st, Halloween. Right here, Oxley and Montrose. That white pole may have been replaced, but still kind of in the same position it was. I'll show a comparison shot. So right before you even see the Strode House, you get shot of this, which is quite a walk from the Strode House. This is the shot they used for the opening of 1978, Halloween. Oxley and Montrose. And your first glimpse of the Strode House right here at Fairview and Oxley. And after that, we get a shot of these garages and the door to the left. And you see Lori come out of there in the morning on her way to school and her dad says, don't forget to drop the key off at the Myers place. She says, I won't. Walking by this exact sidewalk. Look at this. If you look carefully in the film, you actually see these, these exact cracks were there almost 45 years ago. Just about nothing has changed. The Strode House. Jamie Lee Curtis walked right here. Halloween morning, on the way to school. Here's what I was talking about here. I love that this part of the curb here by the steps is the exact same cracks then when Jamie Lee Curtis walked by in 1978 and still looks the same almost 45 years later. After Lori leaves her house, she comes right out here at Magnolia and Meridian. She's crossing right through this path that didn't have, oh, you know what? It was actually this path, it's still there. 
Huh. So she crosses right over this path, coming over this way. Houses have probably been changed at the time. She just took this path down here, and Tommy Doyle would have come down from this road, and they met up right here. Here's the exact corner Jamie Lee Curtis approaches here at Meridian and Magnolia and Tommy Doyle running up to meet her as they would walk onwards straight ahead to the original Myers house. And this was the original Myers house location here. So she would have dropped off the key here. The Myers house now been moved just a stone's throw away. It's now just set up over there. But this is the sidewalk, probably been redone, but it's where Michael, or she would have dropped off the key and she would have moved this way. Michael would have stood about in this area as Lori walked this way, singing that song. I wish I had you all alone. Right down that sidewalk with her brother watching her singing that song right here. Tommy and Lori right in front of the Myers house in 1978. Still the same, just painted different. Pretty cool. I was hearing some noises over here. Whoa! That giant skeleton. Oh, it's Halloween time, folks. <gasps> Who's that? Oh my god. Hiding over here, right by the Sugarman Gallery. Not only this giant Scary skeleton, but look, there he is. I knew I'd run into you on this venture. Michael. Right behind the Myers house where he belongs. He always wants to go home. Here is the angle you would have gotten when Michael's station wagon was parked here. Michael was standing right about up here. And he was looking at Lori through this classroom window right over here, straight ahead. Can't get too close to the school because it probably is in session. But that window right there is where she looked and saw the shape out of her classroom standing right there. And most that house is the same except the air conditioning unit's been moved one to the right. All looks the same. I'll show a shot. Michael, right there. She looks down. Looks back, he's still there. Listens to what the teacher's saying about fate. And then he's gone. That's where he was parked, ominously staring at his sister, who had no idea he was her brother. We're looking out of the classroom, straight across the street, right where I'm standing, to the ominous shape standing behind his car. Again, right where I'm standing, Michael's standing behind the station wagon, looking at her in class. I wanted to touch these hedges featured in Halloween 1 and 2. Oh my. Now every time I watch the film, I can go, I've touched them. It's pretty wild too that Jamie Lee Curtis was sitting right in there. Can't see in the window, but she was in there staring at Michael. So this acted as the interior of the high school when she sees Michael across the street there. Next thing we see is Tommy Doyle after the bell rings here at the elementary school. We're at Garfield Elementary and Tommy Doyle comes down this way. Kids, Richie and Lonnie Elam make him drop his pumpkin, a giant pumpkin. I feel so bad for him. Check out this railing right here. It's the exact railing the kid goes past. Right there, exact railing from the 78 film. They put up some play structures and stuff, but otherwise it looks pretty much the same, except this new gate. Uh, Richie comes down here, and then, bam, runs into the shape right here. Burp. So Michael was standing right here. Michael was standing right here, and then he continues to trail Tommy. Let's Richie go off on one direction, and he just follows Tommy. There's the schoolyard right here. That tree was there, but all this place structure and everything these are all erected later it was just an open field when Tommy walked through but Michael trailed him the whole way got into his station wagon which was parked right here 
show some matchup shots, but this is it. Garfield Elementary, where you follow Tommy Doyle. Michael got into the station wagon right here. Gets in and pulls around this corner. Up this road, past this exact building. Tommy was walking slowly across the schoolyard. Now they're still here when Michael was following Tommy along the fence before all those play structures were put up. Pretty cool to be standing in this exact spot from Halloween. Michael is coming from this direction. He follows Tommy who's walking right on the sidewalk right along all these windows on this side of Garfield Elementary that look the exact same as they did in the film. All those hedges, watch the film, I will show a matchup shot. It's complete, they're completely the same, nearly 45 years later. And there you go. Tommy walked up here, Michael followed him, pretty much to about here. Get his good look at Tommy, and then he continued on that way. From the back seat of Michael's station wagon as he's following Tommy right there. Look at all those hedges. They look the exact same almost 45 years ago. The windows in the school, the hedges. It blows my mind, to say the least. When Tommy is walking this direction, you notice this. Still there. This was there in the movie, not the garbage can, but this thing right beside it. Look at that. That was in Halloween 1 and 2. Michael Myers, only 21 years old, is walking this exact path. Pretty cool. Hard to believe they've never replaced this hand railing here. It's the same railing from the film. Halloween 78. Night he came home. This was the exterior of the high school that they only used for a very small, short period of time. And you'll remember when Lori and Linda, are played by PJ Souls, are walking by those outdoor lockers, that would have just been over here. As you know, they don't have outdoor lockers in Chicago, Illinois. Those lockers would have all been right here. So with that fountain, now it's been changed. They've added these stairs and stuff. But as they go this way, talking about what she's going to wear to the dance, I believe, there was a sign here. And as they leave, very quick scene, you can hear them chanting over here. Where from Haddonfield, couldn't feel prouder, can't hear us now, will yell a little louder. And that house there with the interesting roof right there. Still look the exact same. And I can see the wear on the window from here. Definitely hasn't been done up since 1978. Had to come down here just to get this quick spot. Girls coming from that portion of South Pasadena High School. You see the drinking fountain and the lockers behind them, which are not there anymore. And now the stairs are right where I would be standing. Totally. The Haddonfield High School sign, obviously not here. These are the two houses. There's one there, and there's that one with the interesting roof right there. Unbelievable, still looks the same almost 45 years later. Jamie Lee Curtis playing Lori, Annie, PJ Souls playing Linda, come around this corner. Was a tree right here, is now a stop sign. They came this way, talking about how many books Jamie Lee Curtis had. Sucks they sawed some of the legendary limbs off. But they passed about two of these trees. It's very Halloweenish, taking you on the walk that they basically took. With me, we've stepped into Halloween. They walked over. Camera angle would have been facing this way. They're on Highland Street. Totally. They totally went this way. It was right around this property area where you see Michael in the station wagon come around that cornerstone. Isn't that Devon Graham? It's right about here where Annie yells. 
<laughs> hey, jerk. Speed kills. Bill of PJ Souls and Jamie Lee Curtis on their way home from school, coming around that exact cornerstone monument here on Highland. This red brick, still remnants. Hollywood history. These trees as well can also be seen in the film. Looking just like this. Watch the film. Play close. Pay close attention. Show as many matchup shots on this tour as I can. But, wow. Hm. And the girls continued this way. And here's what some of that red brick there beneath the tree looked like in 1978 as the girls marched on towards home. Lori and Annie pushed this way. They're walking this way. Lori obviously flustered with what's been happening throughout the day. They went this way. And if you see that hedge, it was just then. Lori said, hey, look at, remember that guy who was following us? I just, just, just saw him behind that bush. That's where she saw Michael right there. <laughs> And then Annie approaches herself, this exact hedge. Hey, creep! There's a lot going on. And uh, there was some extras here who weren't actual extras in the film, but you can see them over this, the Michael Myers hedge. This is the most famous hedge planet Earth. Watch when you're watching the movie, okay? This is where she sees Michael standing out. First hedge on Montrose. You'll see some people over here just fascinated with the filming of the movie. They weren't hired. Remember though, when you're watching her talking to Lori this direction, watch for the puff of smoke that goes by her face. That was actually John Carpenter's smoke as he was directing the scene. The cigarette smoke. Pretty cool. That people come all year round. See? actually a flat spot right here in the grass people are who live here are totally used to people coming every single day to the most famous hedge in the world what other hedge in the world has such history behind it the hedge Michael Myers stood behind Halloween 1978 his perspective would have been just like this he stood right here History. History. With that house in the background and the hedge directly behind them. After Michael had walked off. Lori's still looking back once in a while. And that brings us up to the next hedge, which is Annie in Sheriff Brackett's house. So Annie says goodbye, says I'll pick you up whatever time. She goes off to her house. This is uh, 1017. It's the house of... The, well, the bracket residency, we can say. And Lori's kind of looking back like this, the hedges, and when she turns around, boom! It's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled one good scare, huh? Very flustered to running into Bracket and seeing him behind the hedge. She goes this way, and you get a good view. This part of the house here, she hears some kids yelping over in this direction and she walks over here very flustered very flustered with how this walk home from school is going and it was this house just over here you see those trick-or-treaters file out trick-or-treat and she says that legendary line and she goes inside okay so we're now in Sierra Madre Pioneer Cemetery in Sierra Madre California and this is the graveyard where Judith was buried. So Dr. Loomis and caretaker of the cemetery pull up here. They walk this way. The caretaker's explaining a very interesting story that everybody who loves the Halloween movies would love to hear the end of. Okay, here's a shot of Donald Pleasance and the cemetery caretaker, I guess we can say, uh, here in Sierra Madre Pioneer Cemetery. Why do they do it? 
goddamn kids. So they pull up over there, walk this way. You'll know exactly where Judith's stone is because you have to look for this legendary Sinclair stone right here. This grave here, made famous from Halloween 1978, and they've even in the other cemetery they used for Halloween 2018, they used the Sinclair stone. And you know where to find Judith's grave because, well, her imaginary grave, because right across from the Sinclair stone to the left, where my luggage is, is where Judith would have been buried. Legendary Sinclair Stone. Nobody knows who this is, but this is such a famous grave from the Halloween movies. Would love to hear that care the rest of that caretaker story. And him and Loomis come in, and the caretaker goes, Why do they do it? Donald Pleasance gives that legendary line. She came home. There goes the Haddonfield Express. The Myers House. And we see Lori leave again. This time to meet up with Annie to embark on what was going to be the most horrific night of her life. It would change her life forever. So Lori comes this way with her pumpkin, ready to go babysit little Tommy Doyle carrying the pumpkin out of the Strode house on her way to meet Annie for what would be the most horrific night of their young lives. looks down this direction and those houses were not really there however when she looks down this direction those houses were there I'd like to actually show you a couple of those houses but this is where she sat with her pumpkin right here on this stoop I'm sitting on the same stoop Jamie Lee Curtis sat on at the age of 17 it's been a long time awaiting this moment Then Annie pulls up right over here. She notices Annie. She skips across the road this way. Annie's car would have been right about where this blue car is. She gets in and they're off. From this angle of the Strode house, Yep, they'll leave a nice little pumpkin out there so you can recreate the scenes all year long. Not even just near the festival of Sam Hain. But you can see this greenhouse, it was a lighter shade of green. Just over here when she looks to the right, oop, camera slip. When she's looking down this way waiting for Annie, you see that greenhouse across the street really well. I've always been really fond of that. Pretty cool. But when she looks down this way, it's a street somewhere totally different. Up the street just a little bit to this tree to the left to get a shot of that greenhouse, which is just a different shade of green. Still has that tree-like archway, bush-like archway entry right there. Very cool house. Thought I'd show that. Got some CDs hanging from the tree here. Just on stoop of the Strode house. You can get the pumpkin, create the scenes yourself. Gorgeous Halloween day, 1978. There's a stoop right here. JLC sat her little tushy. The age of 17. It's unbelievable. Halloween, 1978, Strode House. Got it. So Annie and Lori drive this way, getting their tokes in, and Annie notices my dad up here by the hardware store and there was a manhole cover right here which you can see has been covered up Michael actually parked right there keeping himself out of sight as the girls went up to the hardware store to talk to her father Sheriff Brackett the 
girls drive right by this exact stone monument that was there then in 1978, almost 45 years later. And they drove up here to what was, in the story, Nichols Hardware. It's now called Radica. I think that's how you pronounce it, Radica. Right here on Mission, right where the original Myers house now stands. Girls pulled up here. Sheriff Brackett was just outside the doors at the hardware store. Uh, Charles Cypher, Sheriff Brackett, standing in front of Nichols Hardware, which is now a restaurant that I'm standing at right now. Let's check it out. Now this was the hardware store. The girls pulled up here. Up with some Halloween mask, a uh, rope, and a couple of knives. Who do you think it was? Loomis talking to Sheriff Brackett after the girls have pulled off. See Michael pull up in the station wagon right to the left. I don't know how they don't notice. The station wagon's right there, Loomis. Girls drive off. Dr. Loomis comes this way and says, Hey, it's nice to meet you, Sheriff Brackett. I gotta talk to you. He tells him, I'll talk to him in 10 minutes. He says, okay, I'll be here. It's then that Loomis is actually standing facing this direction. And Michael comes from this road right here, directly behind him, drives off that way. In the station wagon, Loomis didn't see anything. <laughs> there it is. Hardware store from Halloween, 1978. Charles Cyphers and Donald Pleasance. Those legendary scenes right here. All right, moving on. We're coming down Parkside Avenue here in Burbank, finishing up their toke on their way to babysit. Okay, so this next part here is the road. This is in Burbank, actually, far off from the other spots. I just took a really big jog to get out here. In Burbank, and we see Annie and Lori continue on after talking to Sheriff Brackett, and they continue here down Parkside Avenue. I'm gonna do this virtually uncut. For a long time, this was a hidden gem to Halloween fans. They couldn't find where this road is. It's not near South Pasadena. They couldn't find where this road is that curves where Michael's following them. Annie's asking Lori, what's the matter with you? And she's going, I think he knew. She's going, no, he didn't. You would think Sheriff Brackett would know, being a police officer, what marijuana smells like. So if this was Michael tailing Lori and Annie right here, it's coming right down this little ravine here that collects water in the middle of the road. It took Halloween fans a long time to find this spot. Right here, it's Annie and Lori, and Michael right behind them. The sun was going down. I got a perfect windy gray ambience here outside of LA to do this. The night he came home and drove down this exact road. Got a really good Halloween ambience. Look how many leaves do fall in California. It's funny, when they filmed Halloween, in this scene here where Michael's tailing Lori and Annie before they arrive for their babysitting duties, stalking them down this street in the station wagon, would have waited till September. They wouldn't have had to bring in all those leaves. All the, the leaves you see in Halloween were all brought in in garbage bags by Deborah Hill and John Carpenter. They would have just waited a few more months. The rain begins to fall. Would have gotten that Halloween ambiance. Right here, Parkside Avenue, if you're looking for it. As the girls approach this way, Michael tailed behind night had fallen. We're just off Sunset Boulevard on North Orange Grove. And this is where Lori was dropped off. As Michael tailed behind. Drop Lori off here at the Doyles. It's the Doyle residence, 1530. After dropping Lori off, Annie would pull into the Wallace residence just over there as Michael would 
park right by this tree in this general vicinity. And Annie pulled in there into the Wallace residence. Looks a little bit different than it did in the film. No open garage port here, but the house itself looks the same over here. Thirty-seven Wallace residence into the nighttime now here you see a still you'll see the Doyle house right to the right with the balcony it's where Lori was dropped off to the right of the house looks exact same but to the left is changed quite significantly no more open garage there or car pull in it's all built up there on the left side and Lori over here at the Doyles Michael actually just stand over here by a tree watching. I think many of these trees were actually utilized Halloween, but Lori was babysitting in there talking to Annie on the phone over there. Night had fallen and they were on the hunt for Michael. Loomis and Brackett enter the Myers house and take a very creepy walk in the dark up to Judith's room after noticing a dead dog in the living room. Donald Pleasant's acting. Charles Cyphers too. Top notch. Some of my favorite stuff. That scene took place inside the Myers house. Blackest eyes. The devil's eyes. They've been replaced but there's a point in the night right here at the original Myers house location. Right, just up the street from where the Myers house is now. There was a bunch of bushes and foliage and they're daring Lonnie Elam to go up and knock or go into the Myers house. Richie's going, go in, go in. Loomis sees this happening. He was hiding over here in the bushes and he shouts to him. It's one of my favorite parts. Shouting, hey, hey Lonnie, get your ass away from there the laundry house scene here at the Wallace house was not really behind the Wallace house it was behind the residence at 1542 over here sorry about some of the darkness but it's Halloween Halloween night 1978 it's got to be dark that is right there when she's going to leave and hands Lindsay off to Lori and Tommy she goes to leave the Wallace house when that garage area was more open. Afterwards, we see Linda and Bob pull up here and leaving one door open in the van, they head into the house. As you notice, it's just a wall right there from the outside. So once they're in there, how could there be a living room? Because that was actually shot somewhere totally different. They pulled up in the van and are heading into the Wallace house, Bob carrying Linda Heading in for some fun to the vacant house. Michael waits for the sexual activity to take place here at the Wallace residence. He would have hid Annie's body somewhere. Then he got Bob while he was getting a beer for Linda. PJ Soul's character. Then he comes back, puts the sheet over his head. And of course, she tries to call Lori, and he strangles her. Lori receiving the call from over here. Lori would make sure that Tommy and Lo uh, Lindsay, Tommy and Lindsay were safe in bed. Then she would go check out the matter for herself, assuming it was just a Halloween prank. There's no bushes here, and she comes right out the front. Just like this, that 1978 Halloween night, she walks this way. We're gonna do the whole walk together. All you could see was that faint blue light. She walks this way. 
not knowing that her life is literally about to change forever in the most horrific of ways. So she approaches the house straight up to the front doorstep. They don't answer, so she goes around back through the opening that used to be here. Surrounded the back doors, lets herself into the dark house. She goes up the stairs and finds Judith Meyer's headstone. Annie, Bob, and Linda all murdered. And then the classic chase ensues when she meets Michael the first time, right here in the Wallace house. Michael chases her after knocking her down over the ledge down the stairs. She comes running out the back, flailing and screaming as loud as she can. And she runs out this way. This fence was not here. She ran directly over just a grassy area here straight to this neighbor's house at 1533 and they flick this exact light on they open the blinds as she's screaming for help they close the blinds flick the light off don't help her so she runs as fast as she can Michael is still over here she runs back over to the Doyle house screaming Tommy's name at this point, we can see Michael coming around the corner of the Wallace house over here. So for some of the darkness, it is Halloween. Michael and Lori running this way. Lori in front of Michael. Michael is walking this exact path. Lori runs back up to the front door of the Doyle house. Tommy turns on the light up here, gets back downstairs just in the nick of time to let her in right before Michael gets to the door. Still of Lori yelling at the neighbor's house to the left of the Wallace residence, trying to get some help, but they just ignored her. Tommy, hurry up! Tommy, please! So after we see Tommy and Lindsay run out of the front door here screaming, Dr. Loomis was coming up the street and he knew exactly what was going on. Dr. Loomis gets up there just in the nick of time as Michael was being unmasked by Lori shoots Michael six times off of a balcony which is not this exact balcony but this is the balcony from the opening of part two so we'll say this balcony and <laughs> shoots him out of the window he goes to check it out and Michael's gone house just over there looking very dark tonight Lori asks Dr. Loomis was that the boogeyman and Donald Pleasant says as a matter of fact it was and when he looks for Michael Michael's gone and the movie ends Please like, please subscribe. Hope you enjoyed this highly detailed tour of the original Halloween 1978 filming locations. Please like, please subscribe. It was an absolute honor to finally get to do this. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed doing it for you and myself. The night he came home. You can follow me on Instagram or Twitter. Find the links on my channel. Tune in next time. Never know what you may be missing on the Mr. Thrasher Show. Good night, folks.